Welcome to this episode of ACG's Growth TV. I'm Katie Mulligan, and I'm joined today by Justin Abelo, Managing Director in Houlihan Loki's Financial Sponsor Group and member of the firm's management committee. Houlihan Loki is also the Investment Bank of the Year winner in this year's DealMax Awards. Uh, so, Justin, congratulations on that honor, and thank you thank for you. joining me on it's Growth a big, TV. A big team effort. Thank you. So my first question for you here today is, I would love to hear how you would characterize the current middle market M&A environment today, um, or in early May, and perhaps how that compares to what you expected at the start of the year. Thank you, that's a, that's a great question. I, I, think, I think it's been characterized by a return to normalcy that's been slower than I would have expected. Um, we saw in the first several months of this year signs of an accelerated reopening in the debt market and as a result uh, in the market for corporate control, that's sort of a first derivative of the debt market uh, to some extent. And then I think two months or so ago when some of the regional banks began to get in trouble, uh, I think that recovery hit a little bit of a roadblock and we found ourselves like, and I, I date myself here, like those um, children in the old Heinz tomato ketchup commercial you know, who had upended the, the bottle and were waiting for the ketchup to come out um, and the anticipation has been, has been killing us. Um, the um, uh, one part of the market that has been extremely, extremely robust, one part of our business, I should say, um, has been our M&A sell side pitching, um, which actually has for a long time now been clipping along at a record pace. Our, our win rate is higher than it's ever been historically, and we're bringing things to market, but not that many things. And when you combine those things together, what you get is a pipeline that has been um, inflating uh, very, very fast. And our pipeline is at record levels today. Um, I think that's probably true of most of our competitors out on the street as well. Hopefully it's more true of us. We won the award, uh, but I suspect it's, it's true of everyone. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of concern about what's going to happen when the dam breaks um, and all that catch-up comes spilling out of this increasingly cumbersome metaphorical bottle um, out, on, out onto the plate. Um, it happened in 21, I think the, um, and, and the market had a hard time absorbing that capacity. I think we're probably going to find ourselves in a similar place relatively soon. Um, which goes into the category of, of high-class problems. It's arguably the case that the, the, the system is a little bit less smooth today, the machinery a little more clunky than it was two years ago for a variety of reasons. And the good news is that creates its own positive dynamic. When we talk to sellers, very often they're concerned about being in the front of the queue, not in the back of the queue when the market reopens. And there's a lot of work going on now behind the scenes uh, to prepare for going to market. Hmm. And the theme that seems to be emerging this year is flexibility. We're seeing hmm. private equity sponsors more willing to take a minority yeah. position. We're seeing really creative deal structures. So I guess I wonder if, if you're seeing evidence of that flexibility and, and whether you've noticed any themes around that. Yeah, I, I was about to respond by saying yes, 100%, but I think the answer is probably yes, 80%. And um, there are a number of, of metrics on which sponsors can show flexibility, and on a large number of them, they are showing it. I think your question is exactly right. Um, they are uh, increasingly coming to the table um, with structured solutions of one sort or another. Um, I think I've met with, um, and I, I've really just started my, my day's worth of meetings, I think I've already met with three traditional controlled private equity investors whose main pitch to me today was that they were open for structured deals of one sort or another. Wow. Uh, that's more than enough for a financial sponsor coverage guy to call a pattern, right? <laughs> um, there, are, um, uh, there are certainly structured elements in M&A deals, um, earnouts, for instance, um, that are much more common today than, than they would have been two or three years ago and much more common today than they would be in a, in a normal, whatever that means, environment. Um, I don't always love earnouts. Um, they are great ways to bridge um, value gaps and bridge to a sale. Um, they tend to be classic ways to employ you know, litigators later in, later in life, and they tend to be um, more successful, I think, for, um, for uh, sellers than, than uh, excuse me, for buyers than they are for sellers. Uh, they, they seldom actually get paid out. Um, so I don't always love them, but they are, they are solutions in people's solution kits. 
um, which is nice. We are seeing um, finance mechanisms like seller paper, for instance, um, come back onto the playing field, um, which, is, um, which is exciting. I think there's certain kinds of flexibility that we actually see less now than, than normal. Mm. Um, I think um, in an environment like this that is effectively really a excuse the term, a stock picker's market, um, private equity firms are um, more likely to focus on the industry areas where they know the most. Mm. And as a result, I think a lot of them are shrinking the ambit of their interest towards their core competence. So they're mm. focusing on, on industries where they're most expert and sometimes uh, de-emphasizing the peripheral industries. Mm. Uh, so that's one area where we're actually seeing, I think, less flexibility than we would have seen. Uh, and that's why I don't answer your question 100%, but, but 80%. The 80, yep. Yeah. Um, another thing we hear a lot from private equity sponsors is they love to tout their access to proprietary deal flow, um, often like to meet with management teams and get to know them prior to a broader auction process. Has that shift, has that impacted how Houlihan runs deal processes? It, it has. Um, the, the, the private equity firms that talk about their truly proprietary deal flow are, are by and large lying, of course. Um, there's very little truly proprietary deal flow, and there, there hasn't been now, I think, really for, for decades, at least in the core part of the market that, that we're most active in. Um, there are always exceptions to that, um, but that's, that's a good general rule. Um, what there is, as you imply, um, is um, preferred access and preferred insight that is proprietary being brought to bear on deals. Uh, and that's where I think private equity firms have really evolved in their ability to, um, to bring really special angles to bear um, on potential acquisitions, on, on both sourcing and diligencing them, and, and ultimately on, on operating them. Um, and we're very, very conscious, conscious of that, um, and we do everything we can to conspire with them uh, to help them bring those, um, bring those angles to bear. It's after all, when we're in, in the sell side advisory capacity, which we often, not exclusively are, um, that's in the best interest of our clients. So um, we do find that we um, work with sponsors to help them develop proprietary angles, uh, much more so than we would have in the past. And one of the ways we do that is, is happening right now around 20 yards from here. Uh, because we're hosting, you know, 300 odd one-on-one -on -one meetings, you know, here at DealMax, which is one of the great venues in the world to do this. Uh, we also have our own proprietary industry conferences where we do this. We also spend lots of time um, outside of those conference contexts, helping people um, get to know management teams. So yeah, that's become an increasingly important part of of the business. Um, the old days when investment banks sent, you know, sims out and and teasers out into the ether are, I hope, long gone. Hmm. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Justin, thank you so much for joining me on Growth TV. Thank you for having me.